What's going on guys? Stepping with s &E's Garage. Today we're here with our 2007 Dodge Ram 2500 with the Cummins 6.7 liter engine. And uh, we're going to be doing calipers, rotors, and uh, outer axle seals on this thing. Uh, I got the right side done already. The right side axle seal was completely destroyed. It was leaking. I don't know if you can see. I, I cleaned most of it up. Gear oil everywhere. Uh, so I'm going to take you for a ride with me and we're going to do the other side together. So uh, without further ado, let's get over there. Right, so as you guys can see, we already got the caliper and the rotor off. The caliper is real easy. You take these two, these are your two bracket bolts, unbolt them, pull them out. You take these out first. These hold the caliper onto the bracket. Uh, I believe these are a 13 millimeter they might be a little bit smaller but um yeah you pull them out pull your caliper off pull your rotor off now we're ready to pull this axle shaft out so these are all 13 millimeter or half inch bolts so we're going to pull all these out and then we're going to slide the axle shaft out whoever had this truck before me painted the hub and the paint is actually making the, the nuts or bolts thicker than they should be. So I'm kind of having to wiggle my socket around. You shouldn't have this problem um, unless you painted yours too. Okay, we got all them out. We're going to grab some paper towels and we're going to slide this axle right out. You're going to want to wipe it inappropriately as you remove it. Okay, and then you want to put this somewhere where your splines aren't going to get damaged. So when the axle is a little orange snap ring, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but it's, you know, it's visible right here. And that basically holds in like a little locking shunt to keep the preload on this um, wheel bearing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our flathead like this. And we're just going to pull this out, place it aside. You're going to take a pair of needle nose pliers and you're going to pull this out. Put this aside also and now we take this locking ring out now if you're not replacing your wheel bearings like me I'm not replacing my bearings I'm just doing this seal you're gonna want to try to count the amount of turns that you take because you're gonna want to put it back in exactly the same way you're gonna want to keep the preload the same so we're gonna try to count this here so that's one two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten, eleven. So it took about 11 turns to get this lock nut washer, whatever you want to call it out. So now that we have that out, you're just going to want to grab your hub, give a little bit of a shake, and you'll see that wheel bearing, the outer wheel bearing is going to want to come out right here. So what we're going to do 
to get a better angle at this and we're going to pull the hub off. And the whole hub's going to come out like this. Where's the camera? Okay, so here's your, here's your outer wheel bearing. You're going to just want to give it a spin, you know, take a look at it. This one's nice and healthy, so we're, like I said, we're going to leave this alone. So we're going to put this down somewhere safe that's not dirty right on this paper towel here. And now we're going to flip our hub upside down and I'm going to point you down at the hub. Just let me wipe my hands off, I'll be right back. So this seal here is the one that we're going to be replacing. I have a new one in the truck. So the way you're going to want to do it is you're going to want to take a pry bar or a screwdriver or something and wedge it in between here and just tap it with your hammer and that's going to lift the lip up and then once the lift's up you do it on the other side it'll walk right out. Go grab my tools, I'll show you how it's done. So this is how I do it. Put my pry bar right here kind of tap this up and you'll see that it'll start pulling the lip of the seal up and we're gonna walk basically around the hub and do the same thing So if you look here, now we have a little bit of a gap. We can get in there with a flathead and get it the rest of the way. It's gonna fight you a little bit, but you'll get it. See, this one's giving me a little bit of a hard time. The other one came out a lot easier using this method, but this one also was not leaking. I'm just replacing it. It's a while you're in there type of a thing, but you can see now I'm walking it right out. And here it is. So now we're going to wipe this all out, clean it up, I'm going to grab my new seal, we're going to tap it in with a dead blow hammer. We'll be right back with you. Here's our new seal. We're just going to want to kind of place it in and get it started. Then we're going to use our dead blow and just tap it in. Working around it in a circle. It's very important that you use a dead blow when you do this. If you use a metal hammer, you could potentially damage your new seal, and that's not something you want to do. So once you have it tapped in, you're just going to pull the hub over like this and just inspect the seating area. Make sure you don't have any gaps. We don't, so we're in good shape. So now our next step here, I'm going to lift you up, is we're going to wipe that uh, spindle off, clean it up, slide our hub back on. Let's get some more paper towels. Clean it up real nice, inappropriately, nice and clean. All right, we're gonna take our hub, we're going to carefully slide it back on. All right, we're going to take our axle bearing, clean it up, put it back in. Slide this back in. Okay. Now what I like to do here is I'll just kind of give my hub a tap. Make sure that it is in all the way. Now we're going to find our locking hub, which is right here. I believe we said it was, what, 11 and a half turns or something like that. 
I'm not going to do it that way. That's just an easy way for you guys to do it. What I do is tighten this thing all the way. I tighten it until I can't anymore. And then I'll back it off to the next closest um, notch. And then I'll put my locking tang in. So you just use a pair of needle nose like this. And you spin it in. there. Like I said, I'll tighten this all the way and then I'll back it off. Kind of pull on your hub. Make sure you don't have any movement. And we don't, and that's good. So we're going to put our little locking tang back in after we clean it up. Okay. We're going to take our orange snap ring, we're going to put it back in place, like so, and now we're going to clean all this stuff up, we're going to clean our hub out, we're going to clean the back of our axle um, hub, and we're going to put some RTV on here and start slapping her back together. out real good. We want a nice clean mating surface because like I said we do have to lay a bead of silicone here to uh, seal the axle with the hub assembly. try to clean in there as much as you can too so you don't have anything you know dripping out of there. I'm just gonna spray my paper towel, brake clean one more time, and we're just gonna wipe this real good. Get anything in the bolt holes out. You don't want any surprises here. Like I said, you want this as clean as you can get it. So now we're going to get some RTV. Put it on our finger like this. We're just going to want to put a light coat on the whole surface of the hub. It's not sticking right there because we got some brake clean in that hole, like I said. You really gotta make sure that your mating area is perfectly clean because it won't stick. And then it don't stick, it'll leak. There it goes. All right, cool. going to go get our axle shaft, clean it up, and it will be ready to slide right onto this hub. So let's go get that. Alright, so we got the back half of our axle nice and clean. So now we're going to slide it in. 
you're going to want to try to support the back of it the best you can while you're pushing it in. Okay, play with it a little, get it in, and then boom, it's in. So now we can start our axle shaft to hub nuts. You might have to lift the hub or the axle shaft up a little bit to get it to start. Now these do have his torque spec. I want to say it's some it's around 90, 95 foot pounds uh, if I remember correctly. I don't remember and unfortunately I do not have all data anymore. So these are going to get a couple of what we call in the profession Ugga Duggas, which is, if you ask anybody, it's a technical um, measurement, so it will be accurate. I'm just going to try to go in a star pattern here. <laughs> have to do now is we're going to slide our rotor on, we're going to get our caliper on, and uh, then we can put the wheels back on. So uh, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. It means the world to me. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.